Guys, now that the debate has officially ended from News Nation, I want to give my analysis on the full kit and caboodle. It is an interesting one. Obviously, I spoke previously about what happened in the first 30 minutes of the debate, where it seemed like Christie was really trying hard uh, to defend Nikki Haley. Perhaps he's thinking about dropping out and endorsing her, but bad news for Haley. I don't think she really impressed anybody, and I think Chris Christie, along with Vivek Ramaswamy, were the two people who actually did. And I know people watching might not be happy to hear me say I think Chris Christie and Ramaswamy were the winners of the debate because they're so different from each other, but I'm relatively nonpartisan and I'm simply going to call it as I see it. I'm not really rooting for anybody, but I'm just here to kind of be uh, an objective pundit and kind of talk about who I think won and who I think lost, especially because I've been involved in political campaigns for about a decade, ran for office myself one time long ago. So I feel like I, I know a thing or two about this stuff. But yes, I think uh, in terms of the debate, there was a few interesting moments. Uh, one is that Vivek Ramaswamy really did a good job of projecting himself to be the most modern GOP figure on the issues, on the policy points. And that's very important, specifically on the issue of Ukraine. Most of the GOP supports not sending additional troops into the Ukraine and essentially getting out of that warfare and not not ratcheting up and not even further sending income so uh, the people in Ukraine can be helped can be helped to push back Russia can can help push back Russia with the, with these funds. But if you are going to be supportive of Ukraine then you're essentially agreeing with Joseph Biden, which is not a great look if you're running within the Democratic primary. So Nikki Haley confirmed with a lot of her policy points that she is the modern-day neoconservative. Neoconservative, of course, are the type of people who are trigger-happy to get into war, uh, the type of people like Dick Cheney, former vice president, and George W. Bush, who were eager to get into Iraq, eager to get into Afghanistan. Uh, Obama was a bit of a neocon in terms of his bombing of Syria and his actions there. Trump, ironically, in terms of foreign policy, was much less of a neocon and was sort of, ironically, more dovish than people give him credit for. And that's the way the GOP is heading. I, I, I think a lot of them on this specific issue on foreign policy are more anti-establishment. And the rest of the three did not strike the right note. So I would say even though Ramaswamy came came here with guns blazing, as he usually does, uh, he made a lot of very, very fair points. One thing that Nikki Haley defended herself quite effectively with was on the issue of the Ukraine, Vivek Ramaswamy pressed Haley and said she couldn't know the three provinces that uh, she wanted to bomb. She was able to, to name them. Uh, so that attack certainly fell flat which I thought was interesting. But Haley, interestingly, just absorbed a lot of Ramaswamy's insults. At one point, she said she wasn't even going to address it. And I don't think that was the right move for her to make. Before, she impressed a lot of people because she has this very genial, likable demeanor to her. So when she plays against type and goes on the attack, she seems cool because her actions are so unexpected. Uh, she could always be, I think, in, 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 in as antagonistic as she wants to be because people don't see her as somebody who is generally antagonistic. This time, she kind of came off as the as a robot, which is a perception that she's been trying to battle. Some people think she's too formal, not as bad as Ron DeSantis. She's a lot more likable and just comes off as a nicer person, I think, so she has less of a problem in that regard. But she still does come off as formal and robotic. So her debate performance did not help her. And this is, this is why that's a big problem. I think Christy was thinking about potentially dropping out and endorsing Haley. I think that's why he teed up a lot of uh, his defense of her in the beginning of the debate. And it kind of makes sense. So the, the, the most recent poll had Trump at 40% before he was at 45. So he lost five points. And Haley is at 20% before Haley was at 15%. So she gained five points. And Chris Christie is at 14%. So again, you have Trump at 40, you have Haley at 20, you have Christie at 14%. Christie dropped out and endorsed Haley, then Haley would have 34% and Trump would have 40%. That's only uh, a six-point spread between the two. And who knows what the heck DeSantis would do or if he stays in the race. I think Haley actually wants DeSantis to stay in the race because a lot of people whose first choice would be DeSantis, their second choice would actually be Donald Trump if you're looking at policy. DeSantis, speaking of which, came off better than he did before. And we realized that if he's speaking simply about policy, that's when he could 
show his human side for once, which is very rare, when specifically said we don't want to mutilate our kids, which of course the transgender debate and taking hormone therapy has been uh, a constant battle between the left and the right. Uh, and whether you agree with his comments or disagree with his comments saying we won't mutilate, mutilate our kids, he said it very forcefully and finally saw, uh, presented this kind of human emotional passion that he hadn't before. But other than that, he was all too quiet and I think quite, quite simply uh, Remark unremarkable. Uh, and then Vivek Ramaswamy's move at the end where he has a piece of paper and it says corrupt uh, and he's referring to Nikki Haley. That was a very gimmicky move, but I think it was a smart move because again, it cements the establishing image that Vivek Ramaswamy wants to hammer home as much as possible. Uh, one interesting uh, other factor, which is why I thought Chris Christie did very well, is everybody, as noted, was too afraid to go after Trump. Chris Christie even pressed DeSantis, do you think he's fit for leadership? Asked him five times that specific question, and DeSantis each and every time completely dodged the question. So I think Chris Christie is going to gain a lot of respect for simply just being the most down-to-earth, honest, straightforward guy. It's kind of nice to see a bully bully another bully. And if anybody's wary of Trump and thinks he's a bit of a jerk, you need a jerk to fight to fight a jerk. Uh, and, and quite frankly, part of my French, I, th I think Christie was the only one who came off with any real balls. Nikki Haley, ironically enough, came off with those balls uh, last to be, and she seemed kind of cool because of that. This time, uh, she let the attacks fly over her head, and by not addressing them, she comes off as weak and less than human. Again, it's all about uh, projecting yourself to be relatable and human. Um, so yeah, I think Vivek Ramaswamy creating a niche for himself, projecting that he is the most anti-establishment candidate on terms of policies on TikTok or the or Ukraine or a number of other issues. So he did he was very effective in that regard. And then again, Chris Christie I think tied and won the debate as well with Ramaswamy because he uh, came off as the most bombastic and entertaining to watch. Remember, you know, this. everybody says, oh, this is a circus, this is stupid. It's, it's not stupid. This is a race for the Republican nomination. If you say this this debate was entirely dumb, who cares? Well, that you're self-defeating. That's that's why if you don't watch it and you say who cares, then you, you help create that narrative. And I think if you support Trump or you support Biden, uh, you should be interested in what Marion Williamson and Dean Phillips has to say uh, as well as what DeSantis and Nikki Haley and Chris Christie and Vivek Ramaswamy have to see. I, I, you know, I, I think if you black out the other candidates, you're, you're, not a, you're a lazy follower of politics. Uh, you, you should give them the grace of doing your research and at least learning a thing or two. So hopefully maybe these videos will help with that. Uh, you know, the, the constant narrative is with these debates is that Trump wins. And I think Trump did win in this regard, not because it was a food fight. I don't think that the back and forth and the insulting really hurts Trump in any way. It really makes the GOP look silly. This is politics. And part of politics is entertainment. And you got to keep people watching. So the back and forth with Vivek and Nikki, I think, only, only helps things. But the reason that Trump won is because Haley lost momentum. Christie seemed to gain momentum. So now is Christie the most viable alternative in New Hampshire? If that's so, Trump might have a more comfortable victory and Haley will not have the momentum to win South Carolina. So I think in this practical uh, sense to analyze it, Trump did win because Haley uh, did not do herself any favor. She didn't do terribly and I don't, I don't think she'll do much worse, but do expect an ascension poll-wise from Chris Christie. Uh, uh, in this debate. So I will be in New Hampshire probably in about a week and a half. Trump will have this rally. So I will be up there and covering the developments now that the debates are all over. Obviously, there are no more until uh, Iowa, which is in mid-January. And then on January 23rd, that will be New Hampshire. So I'll, I'll camp out in cold New Hampshire for you guys to interview some people, go to a lot of the rallies. Uh, but yeah, this is, this is my, my uh, thoughts on the debate. Christie brought it home. Ramaswamy did. Uh, the other two were almost wallflower in, in that sense. They've got to up their game and be a little more charismatic and, and be a little more vocal. That's important. Haley kind of felt like she was asleep. Uh, although I will say physically, she not that any of that matters, but she did look more physically attractive and, and probably the most presidential, I think, in that regard. So her outfit, the white outfit, I thought was very cool. Uh, but they all, all looked good, except Ron DeSantis had this little uh, pimple in his uh, bottom of his mouth, which is a bummer, but you can't really do much about that. Uh, but thank you guys for watching. There will be a lot more. I'm going to say this uh, one more time. Please don't unsubscribe. I've lost subscribers randomly. Uh, if you really hate my content, fine. But, be, but 
you know, at least say it to my face and leave a comment as to why you unsubscribed. Uh, please, please, please. Uh, I keep losing subscribers. I, I was able to get a bunch of them back with my video about Scientology. Uh, but I don't know what I'm doing wrong. So if I'm doing something wrong, let me know. Maybe you just hate the variety. Maybe you only like Scientology. You get offended if you see another topic come up. And that might be the case. But let me know because it bums me out. And I notice. I notice if I lose one. So if you're if you're one subscriber and you unsubscribe, I'll notice it and I'll see it. Uh not, not that it should matter. Who cares? But I would like to get that explanation or have you not unsubscribed. Just don't. You don't ever have to watch me ever again. You don't have to get notifications. But uh, if you're supportive of me going out on the limb when I was a, a news anchor in Scientology, uh, why slap me in the face and unsubscribe? Uh, if you want to maintain that support and say, hey, I think you did a cool thing, even, even if you hate politics or hate any other topic, um, just keep that subscription. You'll never know I'm here. Please. Just stay subscribed. That's it. I'm not even asking you to subscribe. I'm just saying stay subscribed. That would be nice. Take care, guys. Thanks.